Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thanks for joining us. Uh, most of the food plot work has come to a screeching halt because of the drought that we're having, also because of the 110, 115 degree heat indexes that we've been having here lately. So I wanted to take a minute and talk about nitrogen volatization. I know this is something that a lot of folks are wondering about, something that's coming up real soon as you're trying to get that nitrogen on your fall based food plots. It's always something that you hear about nitrogen volatization but nobody really goes into detail explaining it, what it is, how to prevent it, what soils are more susceptible than other soils. So we're just going to go through the whole deal and hopefully we're all going to learn a little bit about this and how to prevent this. We'll start out with the definition of nitrogen volatization. It's the loss of nitrogen, of applied nitrogen, to the atmosphere as an ammonia gas. Essentially what's happening is that nitrogen that you're throwing out there as urea, some of it is turning into a gas and going up into the atmosphere and waving bye-bye to your field which is important to you because you're spending money on that nitrogen. You want that nitrogen in your soil, not in the atmosphere. As we're getting ready to apply our nitrogen to anything from brassicas to cereal grains, anything that's not a legume, we're going to be adding nitrogen to this fall. The most widely used form of that is going to be urea. Urea is very bad about nitrogen volatization, releasing that nitrogen into the atmosphere and not getting it in your soil. So what are some conditions that make nitrogen volatization worse? So first we're dealing with high pH soils. Fortunately for most of us, I feel like most of us are in the low pH soil ranges. So most of us, this typically gets worse. They say anywhere from six and a half to a little over seven is where uh, it starts picking up. So most of us are not going to be that high. You know, we're obviously shooting for seven for our nutrients to be able to uptake, but most of us aren't shooting for eight or nine. I'm sure there's some of you that are watching that maybe, maybe you're your, P, your soil pH is that high, but for the vast majority of the country, that's not an issue for us. We have a low pH. High temperatures. High temperatures increase nitrogen volatization. Typically, what we say is before May 1st, we typically don't have much problems with nitrogen volatization. Like when I'm planting my corn crops, typically I'm fertilizing before May 1st, and that's the exact reason that we're not getting a lot of nitrogen loss from those spring planted food plots. Temperatures are low, the nights are cool, typically rain events are coming. Another condition that makes the volatization worse is going to be wet soils, but no rain. So if you were to go out right after a big rain event and broadcast your urea on say your brassica plot, and then all of a sudden for two, three weeks, you don't get any rain, that field is highly susceptible to nitrogen volatization. Heavy organic matter or heavy crop residue, both cases increase nitrogen volatization. Also dry, windy condition. So if you're having a lot of wind and it's a real drying type of environment, that increases nitrogen volatization as well. Let's talk about when does this occur? Typically starts immediately is that granular of nitrogen begins to melt. It starts pretty quick after that and it's going to go for the most part we say two to three weeks is when we're pretty much in that danger zone. After the, the third week there we're typically kind of out of it. It's not going to be as big a deal. The damage has been done by that point. Many of you across the country have different soil types. There's definitely a difference in soils on the amount of nitrogen volatization that happens on those soils. For instance, a high clay content soil is going to have less volatization. On the flip side of that, a high sand content is going to have more volatization. So if you're in a high clay content area, as many of you guys are, uh, you're going to deal with less volatization than, than what a lot of us are that are, have a lot of sand in our ground. But let's talk about how much we lose. This part of it can get really, really tricky, and it depends on a lot of different scenarios. A lot of those that I've already mentioned up through there can play into this a lot. But they say, on average, to look at about 10 to 20% roughly. That is a typical loss. When it gets bad, it can be 10 to 30%. And in extreme cases where you have a lot of those things that I was just 
mentioning working against you, it can be as high as 60% of the nitrogen that you put down being lost to the atmosphere. It's definitely something that we as food plotters have to be aware of and we have to understand and need to understand this before we go to the field to spread our urea. Let's talk about some solutions to this issue. Applying urea during cool spells. We know as the temperature increases, nitrogen volatilization basically follows that temperature. So if we're in a cool spell, volatilization will be less. The best thing that we can do as food plotters to minimize nitrogen volatilization is going to be apply urea when we have about a half inch or more of rain coming within two days. If you can get that recipe there, you essentially have very, very minimal loss. I know a lot of times that's not that's not possible for us. Especially, you know, we've got a lot of acres that we're getting over or, or you know, we're on a work schedule. Fortunately for us as food plotters, there's something else that we can do that limits nitrogen volatilization, and that's incorporating that nitrogen into the soil. That's essentially what the rainfall is doing. It's washing that nitrogen down into the soil where it can't escape as ammonia gas. So incorporating nitrogen is the exact same thing. We're just going to incorporate that with anything from a disc, a tiller. We don't have to go deep with this. We don't necessarily want to, to work our ground deep. We're looking at about one inch or less is what we're looking at. And that's going to trap that nitrogen in there and not let it escape as ammonia gas. For large acreage food plotters, you guys that have tons and tons of food plot, you can go to your local co-op. They are going to be able to treat that urea with some sort of coating to slow that release time down. So essentially what that does, instead of as soon as that urea hits the ground, it's starting to convert and some of that's going to ammonia gas, it basically just keeps it there. And it keeps it there until you can get a rain event. A lot of times they're about two weeks is what they'll hold out pretty well. Typically you're gonna get some rain in two weeks. I know we've been really, really dry here lately. Uh, and if I would have done this two weeks ago, I still wouldn't have any rain. I don't typically do this, to be honest with you. I have a schedule where I can get out there typically before a rain and get my urea on and not have to throw it out in advance. So another thing that we can do to kind of mitigate this nitrogen loss is, is typically what I do. And I'm just going to add just a little bit more. I usually add between 10 15%, I'm, I'm looking at these above characteristics and seeing how many match off the criteria that I have on my ground. And I'm just gonna add a little bit a little bit more nitrogen. You know, for me, if I can add 10% 10 more nitrogen and not worry about it and get it done, that's what I'm gonna do. But that's what I recommend is trying to get this stuff in before rain, incorporate it and or just put a little bit more. A little bit more nitrogen is not gonna hurt anything. That's gonna help your plant and keep it that dark green color. It's going to let you get maximum growth out of that out of that food plot. So some of the best case scenarios that we're looking at when we're, we're putting urea down are obviously we're looking at a rain event where it's you know gonna basically rain right after you put the urea down or you're gonna incorporate it into the soil or if you're broadcasting, You've got cool conditions where the temperatures aren't very hot. Those are all pretty pretty ideal for putting down your application of urea. Some of the worst case scenarios, like I said before, you know, if you combine all those that I was talking about, your high soil pH, high temperatures, wet soils but no rain, heavy organic matter, and dry windy conditions, holy cow, you can lose an awful lot of nitrogen off that food plot. You know, you may have put down 100 pounds of nitrogen but in a worst case scenario, you may only have 40 pounds left. And I don't think that's typical, but that would be the worst that it's gonna be is, is gonna get up in that 60% range. I think at, as we as food plotters, we can look at it and say, you know, anywhere between 10, 15, 20% is where you're gonna lose to nitrogen volatilization when you're broadcasting urea uh, and you don't have a weather event coming. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you.